Okay, section two, the application of DAX Copilot in Epic. So within the DAX Copilot and Epic workflow, there will be three main topics that we'll cover. It will be the setting up of DAX Copilot and Epic, the workflow with templates and pre-built phrases. This is supplementary to the previous videos that were sent out for the daily progress and eval note, and then capturing the eval and follow-up notes using DAX. So the bullet points that we'll cover under setting up DAX Copilot within Epic will be ensuring proper access and permissions, demonstrating of how to initiate DAX Copilot for a PT session, and utilization of the pre-built smart phrases. Within the workflow and the templates, we'll look an overview of the templates as previously described, customization of the templates to match the clinical needs, and then finally, how to use DAX Copilot during evals and efficiently updating follow-up notes and tracking progress without redundancies. All right, so if you haven't been granted proper access to DAX Copilot thus far, um, there, the ideal workflow is that you complete the health stream. I know that Clarissa, as well as uh, Brittany Piersanti, who is a representative from Microsoft, had uh, been uh, doing rounds within our clinic, had given access to several of our members, which is great because it allowed people to pilot and trial DAX Copilot. However, I strongly recommend that you go back and uh, access the health streams. Uh, for those who weren't granted access, then uh, within, they say, 48 to 72 hours, that is business days, uh, that you would be able to be, uh, you will automatically get access to DAX Copilot on Hi the Hi Hi Q app, as well as you'll see the symbolization within your Epic uh, upon completing the health stream. Uh, keep in mind that you do also have to complete the survey at the end of the health stream, putting in your name and your contact information in order for that access to go through. All right, so the demonstration of how to initiate DAX Copilot for the PT session, there was some confusion because within the health streams as well as with the rounding that was done by Clarissa and Brittany is that there were suggestions that uh, you could utilize a uh, essentially an open text field and going through the DAX quick button. However, we uh, we have decided, or uh, it's been more of an administration decision to go th with NoteWriter for all notes. So you'll still go through your standard workflow of clicking on the create note writer, regardless of a daily progress or eval note. And the rationale for this is that it allows for consistency of note appearance. That is, uh, across all note types, there's a consistency within the format that crosses not only the note type, the therapist, and the patients. And this is, allows for uh, consistency for third-party uh, payers as well as uh, for one another. Uh, so we have uh, more of a homogenous uh, note display within our team and then also for uh, other uh, healthcare providers within the healthcare system. Secondary to that, we're going to mitigate and avoid human errors. So it allow, by utilizing NoteWriter that we keep a lot of the hard stops that would otherwise allude uh, to uh, un, unintentional errors, be it billing mistakes, be it uh, the uh, due dates of progress notes, so on and so forth. And so it allows us to ensure that we're still hitting the mandatory documentation elements, particularly within the eval and the progress note, but also within the daily as well. And then we also allow uh, using the note writer because of the clickable buttons, uh, it will allow for the trackable data elements. A couple of those that uh, what this means is like for the functional outcome measures for pain, the clickable buttons within the objective section, prior level function, current level function, again, within eval goals for the progress notes and the evals. Uh, there's others as well. It's This is not a comprehensive list, but uh, on the back side, it allows for these trackable data elements that are important for uh, not only billing, but ensuring that we're in compliance with uh, the standard uh, auditing uh, recommendations, for not only within our own internal standards, but within the healthcare system at large. 
Uh, continuing with the theme of demonstrating how to initiate the DAX Copilot within the PT session, uh, I know there was some confusion that the smart phrases uh, could previously, it was described at least, uh, I believe it was uh, from Brittany uh, from Microsoft. She was under the impression that the smart sections could be typed within the left-hand portion of the of our standard workflow uh, or of NoteWriter. Unfortunately, that's not the case. These aren't rich text boxes, so you have to type in the DAX smart sections uh, on the right-hand uh, side of the screen. Uh, they do not work in these sections nor here uh, as of yet, though there is a ticket and some uh, back end efforts to be able to get that functionality. Uh, that would be key because then we could actually create uh, macros that would already have the smart sections built in. You can see I've kind of highlighted, I know it's small, but it's the uh, T-spine macro for my daily note. By clicking on that, that would populate uh, in future, uh, our hopes are that that would allow the smart sections to automatically be populated within the smart uh, boxes below. Uh, but as of right now, we have to type it in the right hand portion of the note writer. Okay, so the pre-built smart phrases, you have your AP section, which is your assessment and plan. You have HPI, which is your history of present illness. PE is your physical exam. Results are your results. And that is differentiated from your PE because that is your labs, your imaging, your any other tests or diagnostic uh, that have been run. Um, if you use uh, keywords uh, such as results and tests, DAX will uh, oftentimes populate that in the appropriate section. Uh, this is still kind of a work in progress, progress as our tests are not the uh, standardized test that DAX is used to hearing. However, I've been successful at doing this both with M-Trigger as well as uh, with the uh, BioDEX. And so that both of those uh, can be populated if uh, deliberately specified that they are tests and that they are under, they're intended to go under the results section. And then the DAX consent, uh, this is put at the bottom of your note. Uh, this simply specifies that you've notified the uh, patient that they uh, that they are being recorded, audio recorded for best practices, quality insurance purposes, so on and so forth. And then the DAC express all smart phrase uh, section. This populates all four sections uh, of DACs. Uh, keep in mind that it's probably best practices right now to use each individual smart phrase rather than having them all populate at once. Uh, I know it's a little bit redundant because you have to type each section. Uh, that being said, the, the, once you, if you were to populate all of them and you were to copy and paste them to the appropriate sections that is under the assessment, the objective and the subjective portions of your, uh, your note, um, unfortunately, they, the smart sections lose their functionality, meaning that DAX won't populate into them because they've been edited. Um, so uh, though this uh, this bottom smart section, uh, uh, smart phrase exists to populate all sections um, per the previous videos that were sent out as to how, how to populate the eval, the daily and the progress note, it would be recommended that you populate each smart phrase independently. Okay, so I keep rever referring to these video tutorials of the eval daily and progress notes. Uh, so if you, for some reason, uh, missed uh, Bill's email, uh, when this PowerPoint gets sent out, I've hyperlinked it here. You can also access the email on your mobile device by scanning that QR code. And then for ease of reference for each of the appropriate videos, I have also linked uh, a QR code here. Uh, it is in a, uh, uh, essentially a non-public but available accessible domain that you can access it uh, not only at work uh, within the internet but also at home on your personal device as well. Uh, feel free to reach out with any additional questions once you've reviewed those. Um, happy to answer those. All right, so customizing the templates to match the clinical needs. So no matter how efficient DAX Copilot becomes, it will never beat the efficiency of a macro. So I would encourage you to continue to utilize a lot of the other workflow shortcuts, that is smart phrases, dot phrases, uh, smart uh, links, as well as the macros that you, we've come to know and love because they are the most efficient means possible. Um, 
continue to use and or bill out and share macros uh, within evaluations. That is assessment, goals, subjective, objective tabs. Uh, for the daily notes, I, I don't, to my knowledge, I feel like this is underutilized. I don't think that uh, a lot of our team are utilizing uh, the uh, daily note macros, uh, but these are available. Same thing with your progress notes, as well as for the goals tab. So uh, for, uh, again, as I alluded to, depending on what comes on the back end of what the uh, Epic IT and the Stanford IT and the Microsoft uh, personnel are able to come up with as far as solutions for the rich tech text boxes within note writer uh, potentially we'll be able to incorporate these smart sections of dax into our macros uh, but as of right now again they're two separate uh, components that where you'll need to kind of merge macros as well as the dot phrases uh, as previously described uh, that being said um, i would say continue to build out macros within the daily notes as well as the progress notes if you haven't been doing this already uh, and then uh, look forward to the potential to incorporate uh, the smart sections within these macros in future uh, and as uh, this is simply just uh, reiterating what i stated a moment ago that future amendments of the note writer uh, will hopefully enable the DAX smart section to be built into our macros that you uh, are in the process of creating if you haven't already All right, and then how to use DAX during evals. So this is just a written out stepwise format of how to uh, do, or how to where, how and where to populate the smart sections. So you're gonna open your note writer, you're gonna populate the DAX smart sections on the right hand portion of the pane, as I mentioned. Uh, I like to put it above the assessment and plan. Again, there are certain section breaks uh, that allow you to populate the smart phrases or the smart sections within the appropriate uh, headers, such as directly under your subjective. Uh, the, what you type in the su subjective tab will populate below that. Uh, and then your uh, PE and your results sections will go under the objective header. You'll populate the, your macros for the different tabs within your note. That is the assessment, the goals, the, uh, the subjective, as well as the objective. Uh, Pre-record the patient's name, diagnosis, pronouns, and any additional clinical relevant information that you would like to uh, for DAX to pre-populate into the note. And then with the patient, then you're going to notify the patient of the recording, pull up your patient IQ and go through the recording as you, as though you would with your normal intake. This The, uh, the difference here is that DAX will also record that and uh, provide a summary under that .hpi section. And then step eight is proceed with the eval workflow using DAX best practices for both the physical exam results and the assessment and plan sections respectively. Okay, and just a couple of important reminders is one, be sure to reread DAX populated text for accuracy. Uh, there's been several instances where it's either uh, had the wrong pronouns uh, input in, it's uh, added additional context of information, or unfortunately at, uh, in some seldom instances, again, it's like good 95% of the time, it's uh, just had incorrect uh, information. Um, so just be sure that you are auditing uh, the output of the text um, and either put dot, doc, uh, DAX consent at the bottom of your note or uh, build it into your eval macros uh, that will save you time of having to type that out e uh, for each of your different eval notes. Okay, and then for the follow-up notes. So in a similar format to the eval, you're gonna go through your same workflow of either opening the note writer and or copying for the previous note. Uh, the DAX, uh, step two, the DAX smart sections uh, and prior content will automatically populate. You don't need to repopulate the smart sections again. Uh, the information of, this, of the current encounter will just uh, fill in beneath the previous content. 
Uh, and so uh, you, again, you'll go through the same pre-recording, patient name, diagnosis, pronouns, any additional relevant information you want to add. Uh, and then with the patient, you'll notify them of the recording similar to the eval. Proceed with the recording for the daily note using the de best practices for the different sections. And then after the recording, the one new additional step uh, is that you may want to tweak and or edit or uh, take out the previous note that you copied forward content within the smart section. Keep in mind, if you do that immediately, then the new note information or recorded information won't actually populate within that particular smart section. Uh, and then once again, just be sure you're rereading and auditing it and then either remove the prior text uh, or uh, if you do want to keep a, a running tally of the information, for instance, I think it's most appropriate within the uh, objective section or results section. If you want to see it uh, populate over time that you can use the smart phrase dot TDN, which is stands for today's date, non-refreshable, meaning it won't actually refresh each time you copy the note forward. It will keep the same date um, uh, from the uh, date at which you date it. Um, there are, if you do dot TD, it will refresh each time, meaning every in a week's time, if I were to copy forward a note from today, uh, that that any date within there that was populated with .td would simply refresh to the new note date, uh, which is less desirable if you're trying to keep a, a timeline uh, and timestamp of the different objective measures.